Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well. Today I am going to be filming a video about some books that I think need to be on your radar because they are on mine uh, and they're all books that are coming out the rest of the year. So I'm kind of too late to do a second half of the year. I'm too early to do like a September onwards, although August is not really giving us much. It does feel a little bit autumnal, but these are the 10 books that I am most excited about that are coming out for the rest of 2021. And there's a couple of like quite well-known ones on here. I've avoided putting on like the Sally Rooney, although I am of course very excited about it. Um, but yeah, a lot of these I hadn't really heard of until I was going through publisher catalogs, looking on the bookseller. Um, so I thought it would be fun to share them with you because I think they all sound really interesting. Um, and yeah, I'd love to spread the joy and get you excited about them as well. I've put these in publication order. Oh, I'm also not including any books that like I already have in proof form. This is like, I have a couple of books that have already been sent to me that are coming out in September that I'm excited about, but I probably already hauled them or talked about them. These are books that are yet to make their ways into my grasp, but that I'm excited about nonetheless. So let's go. First book I wanna talk about is coming out on the 7th of September and it is Happy Hour by Marlo Granados. And this book, I mean, I love the cover of it, it will be here um this book just sounds really interesting um and a little bit more like maybe like light-hearted i feel like a lot of the books on here are quite intense vibes and this one just sounds like it's going to be really nice it, like it, it has been described to a tessa moshfeg in terms of its bite but also like ch the charm of nancy mitford and i think it's just going to strike a really nice balance um between like that little bit more light-hearted but also still really literary and interesting so it says it kind of captures a summer in new york city and i know like new york is a little bit tired maybe some people might say um i'm not too put off by it i don't like seek out books necessarily set in new york but doesn't put me off but the idea of it being in summer we know i love a summer book something that is just encapsulates a kind of small amount of time in a perfect moment and we're following a 21 year old girl called isa who yeah is spending the summer in new york it says that she is wise enough to understand that the purpose of life is the pursuit of pleasure and yeah they go to new york for like a summer adventure her and her best friend it says by day they kind of try and make money by selling clothes like a market store and then by night they're kind of going out going to kind of like glitzy parties really wanting to experience that new york um kind of dream i guess that people have and it says they're kind of trying to build up social capital and it's kind of testing their friendship so i do think it's going to be quite a like in a good way but like a quite a frivolous novel a lot of like parties and that kind of coming of age feel i feel like you get it a lot in like tv shows where it's like two girls in the city like trying to make it good and i don't know i just think that like i say it's something i feel like a lot of films are about or a lot of tv shows and sometimes it can be a little bit um just a little bit more surface level and i quite like the idea of translating that into a literary novel um and potentially like interrogating this idea of the new york dream and the sort of i can imagine it being a bit of a comedy even about of manners um in the kind of people it looks at the kind of people who are on that scene and we all know i love books about female friendship and i don't know i just think it could be fun I like the idea of it being a little bit gritty, a little bit charming. Um, yeah, I think it just sounds nice. The next book is Pleasant View. I might move a bit actually, so I've got room to put the book there. The next book is Pleasant View by Celeste Mohammed. This is a piece of Caribbean literature set in Trinidad. I do really like Caribbean literature. I have loved particularly some books set in Trinidad and actually two of the books that I loved that were set in Trinidad um, is Love After Love by Ingrid Perso, one of my favourite books, and Golden Child by Claire Adam, and I, they've both already like blurbed this, so I feel, I feel confident going into it if it's already got that kind of like support, but I do think this is going to be, I mean both of those books are quite bleak in parts, but I do think this is going to be a pretty heavy, pretty kind of difficult novel, and I just think it's interesting because I'm finding that in many of the Caribbean books that I read, uh, thinking recently about how the one-armed sister sweeps a house or um, Here Comes the Sun by Nicole dennis Ben, There's that real, I guess, clash of a sort of paradise, a kind of idealistic view of the Caribbean with a lot more of a realistic look at it and, you know, an unflinching take on that. And I, I don't know, I think it's just interesting that that's a theme that's coming out and I'm keen to keep like reading and building up my ideas around that, if that makes sense. 
I think this book is going to particularly look at an election that's taking place there. So it talks about election night, one of the candidates who's obviously like a man and then he I think is violent in some way towards a woman or another candidate, basically someone in this election, someone who's like politically involved in Trinidad, um, really violently beats up a woman and she then wants to enact her revenge. It says it kind of looks at the consequences of how that all plays out for different people in the community um, and in on the island. And again, something I really like that kind of um, looking at a place, a place with a very strong sense of self i think is something that i find really interesting or really um somewhere that you feel very grounded in that place and then exploring how things play out for a variety of characters especially when you're interrogating like social class and gender struggle and so i already feel well set up to enjoy this because it is adopting a lot of the tropes that i've already enjoyed it says it's written in a blend of the english language but also um a very like place-based creole and i love books that do interesting things with language and yeah it just talks about in the synopsis the kind of dichotomy of the generosity and the cruelty and the optimism and the despair um and yeah i just think it sounds so up my street but also love the idea of like a woman taking revenge and with the fact it's on election night makes you feel like it is going to be pretty political so yeah very excited about that one and if i didn't say that one comes out on the 14th of september i believe no i was wrong the 9th of september the next one comes out on the 14th of september and that is one of the more well-known ones on this one i've talked about this a few times and it is harlem shuffle by colson whitehead i read the nickel boys by colson whitehead last year and adored it it was one of my favorite books of the year and although the underground railroad is still sat on my shelf i feel like this one is really sounds very up my street because I've heard it's kind of like a crime novel or like masquerading as a crime novel, um, but also a bit of a kind of like a dark romp kind of vibes. And um, we're following a main character called Ray Carney, who it says to his customers and neighbors in Harlem, he is your like upstanding normal guy. He's married, he's trying for a second child, but it says few people know he descends from a line of crooks and that when cash starts to get tight for Ray and his family, he kind of turns to maybe some more like criminal nefarious goings on. And basically there's this big plan, like this kind of idea to heist um, this hotel that he gets involved with. And it's saying that it looks at like as he gets more pulled into a kind of criminal underworld, he begins to lead a double life and you kind of look at the strain that puts on him, like which side he is going to be pulled to and also how in being i guess part of that criminal underworld he is learning more about like the way that harlem operates so i do think it's going to be like pretty you know have a lot of social commentary and a little bit of like political social take on it but then also i've heard like it really has like the fun of a heist novel and the kind of pace and the kind of vibrance and i think that'll be a really interesting i think that's a really interesting kind of form for a novel and i'll be interested because the nickel boys was so kind of earnest like it was really really beautiful and really sad and it was very restrained i would say and, and not melodramatic but yeah it was it was kind of a had a somber tone and so i'm interested i know Cousin Whitehead's a really like versatile writer and he's written more kind of like thrillery, almost maybe like dystopian y things before. Um, but because I've only read The Nickel Boys, I'm interested to see him, yeah, read something where there's a little bit more fun to it, a little bit more joviality, but then I'm sure he will also be, you know, writing very beautifully and taking a very like astute look at Harlem. So that sounds great. Then on the 7th of October, we have Case Study by Graham McRae Burnett. Um, so this is published by Sarah Band, who are an independent publisher based in the Northwest, whom I love, and I love Graham McRae Burnett. He's most famous for um, his bloody project, which was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. And I have that book, but I am yet to read it. Classic, putting other books on my TBR when I haven't read other ones I already own but um yeah that's a kind of like historical not really a crime novel it's like about a crime but it's really not it's about um, kind of I believe like history and storytelling and psychology but he's also written two novels that are in like a, a kind of series about a small town in France and they're kind of these like detective noir novels and I just absolutely love them so kind of yeah that real typical noir feel where it's so like environmental and so atmospheric but then i think his mysteries are really um wily and a little bit wry so i absolutely love those so i've been anticipating this new one and it also sounds probably more similar to his bloody project but 
appealing to me maybe a bit more than his bloody project. It's set in London in 1965 and it says an unworldly young woman believes that a charismatic psychotherapist has driven her sister to suicide. Like immediately, that's just a great <laughs> setup for me. Like I love, there's a already a kind of mystery. I love reading books about psychology or like psychotherapist particularly and and yeah there's a kind of intrigue already it says intent on confirming her suspicions she assumes a false identity and presents herself to him as a client recording her experiences sorry recording her experiences in a series of notebooks but she soon finds herself drawn into a world in which she can no longer be certain of anything even her own character and yeah i just think that's such a good little synopsis i think that it sounds like it's going to have a little bit more of that playfulness maybe that um that i think the french series has a kind of like false identity like the drama of it but also kind of i love books that explore like identity and i guess um the idea of kind of like it says you know she can't really be certain of anything like i'm imagining maybe some obsession or maybe some like slipping of boundaries and i think it's really interesting and it's also like kind of based on a true person i think it says um Graham McCray Burnett presents these notebooks interspersed with his own biographical research into Collins Braithwaite. So again, like it's doing something a little interesting with form because we're going to get a kind of um, diary fiction format, which again, I like, I love a diary and then also some autobiographical bits. That's the only bit that scares me a little just because I'm thinking of like another book I read, which was like fiction interspersed with autobiography and I found it a bit jarring. It was um, Sight by Jesse Greengrass and I don't know, I found the autobiographical stuff like so much less interesting, but that was autobiography about like um, biologists in the like 18th century and a 1960s psychotherapist who was potentially dodgy is just a lot more appealing to me anyway. It's the kind of thing I would potentially read a non-fiction non book about, if that makes sense. Um, and it says it's wickedly humorous, a meditation on the nature of sanity identity and yeah i just think he's a really interesting great writer and i'm excited about it okay so next up on the 14th of october we have lemon by kwon yeo sun which has been translated by janet hong i'll just give you three words haunting literary okay four words crime story does that not does that not just sound like me as soon as i saw this book i was like oh i need to read you now and then was very upset when i realized it didn't come out in the translation until October um but yeah I'm really really excited about this it's translated from the Korean and set in Korea um in the summer of 2002 and I do love me I do love me a little like early 2000s moment I feel like fiction or a lot of fiction kind of takes a while to catch up to itself it's either like really contemporary or it's like specifically historical and I think being in the 20s scary it's quite interesting to see like reflections on the early 2000s from that viewpoint if that makes sense to be fair though i don't know when this was initially published so it could have been out in korea for ages but it says in the summer of 2002 summer we love to see it 19 year old kim hayon was murdered in what became as the known as the high school beauty murder there were two suspects in jung jun who had a rock solid alibi and han manu to whom no evidence could be pinned the case went cold immediately i love a cold case um that's just something that I love in crime fiction. It says we're kind of 17 years have passed. So I guess the murder was in 2002 and then the present storylines in 2019. That makes sense. Um, and grief and uncertainty take a cruel toll on her younger sister. Unable to move on with her life, she tries in her own twisted way to recover some of what she's lost. And basically her younger sister is trying to find out the truth of what happened. And it says told at different points in time from the perspective of her sister two of um kim Hyeon's classmates so also quite like a, a multiple perspective thing in crime and it says it's a piercing psychological portrait that takes the shape of a crime novel i always love things that are like ostensibly a crime novel but are also looking into a lot of other stuff and i think it does take quite a sharp look from what i've read about it at um social issues in korea and yeah i just love a book where you have the fun you have the pace the like persistence of a mystery to be solved but then that is used as like a vehicle to explore other things um love a cold case love a multiple perspective love a sister it's got a lot a lot going on for me and yeah i'm really excited about it next up also on the 14th of october we have trust by Maniko starnoni and this is it's published by europa um i believe who are like a small independent publisher and it's translated from the italian like europa published um Ferente, i believe it's translated from the italian by Jhumpa Lahiri, which I just think is cool. Like, I know Jhumpa Lahiri's latest book, Whereabouts, she wrote in Italian and then translated it herself. Sick. Um, and so, yeah, I just think that's interesting that it's a book translated by arguably, like, 
maybe not in Italy, but definitely over here, I'd say a much more famous author. And I typically just really like the stuff Europa put out. And this sounds really, really, really interesting. And um, it's about two people who have a love affair, Pietro and Teresa. And it says, after another terrible argument, she gets an idea. They should tell each other something that they've never told another person, like their deepest, darkest secret, something they're too ashamed for like the world to know. And she thinks that will keep them together, like bond them and kind of bind them and I don't know, allow an extra, allow some more intimacy and um, that will allow them to kind of stay together. Uh, a few days after they've exchanged their secrets, they break up. Pietro then meets someone else, falls in love, gets married. But, um, but then it says the secret that he confessed to Teresa kind of haunts him, like the idea that someone is out there knowing his darkest secret. I'm not sure if we all know what it is at that point or if they just will exchange them off page. I'd be interested in either. And Teresa starts kind of like periodically reappearing in his life um, but then it says or is it he who seeks her out and it says trust asks how much we are willing to bend to show the world our best side and i just think this book sounds so good like so much good stuff to be unpacked here like relationships i love like the idea of you know what you will do to keep a relationship together the idea of like secrets and sharing that most vulnerable part of yourself with self with someone but then also like the aftermath like the paranoia the obsession of pietro the way that like secrets can kind of take their toll on you and yeah it just sounds like it's going to be really like uh, a bit like twisty and like edgy dynamic between these two people and it's giving me like a tiny bit um it's not really the same and it's probably just because it's italian translation published by europa but the way that in Days of, Ab of Abandonment by Elna Ferrante, you see like a relationship breakdown and then you see like paranoia and obsession creep in and it kind of explores like the the links and the bonds between two people who have been together. I just think it sounds so good. So yeah, very, very, very excited about this one. I feel like a lot of people who might not know about it would also think it sounds amazing. Then on the 21st of October, we have Born of No Woman by Frank Boussi. Boussi? I'm really showing how badly I am at pronouncing names in this video. Um, I don't think this is a translation. It's like set in France and it's had a lot of like French press, but then usually like it would show you the translator and it, it doesn't. So bear with me on that. I'm not sure. Um, but it has been described as a word of mouth international bestseller. And I can kind of see why this sounds like such a interesting concept. And yeah, I'm just obsessed with it. I hate the cover. I hate it. But I can get past that. So it's set in 19th century rural France. Love the France, quite like the rural. 19th century is maybe not my typical thing, but just bear with until you get to the synopsis. I mean, spitting out then bish. So it says, before he is called to bless the body of a woman at the nearby asylum, Father Gabriel receives a strange troubling confession. Hidden under the woman's dress, he will find the notebooks in which she confided the abuses she suffered and the twisted motivations behind them. And as this woman, Rose's terrible story comes to light, sold as a teenage girl to a rich man, hidden away in an old manor house deep in the woods and caught in a perverse web manipulated by those society considers her betters. A girl whose only escape is to capture her life in all its devastation and hope in the pages of her diary. Doesn't that sound good? Like we've got the diary thing again. We have that like religious drama, which I love me like a confession. Do you know what I mean? Like a, a priest. It gives it a little bit of spice, a little bit of something. Um, and it sounds like a pretty bleak um, situation. We already know like from the beginning that this girl is, this woman is dead. Um, but the idea of her recording her life in the pages of her diary and kind of telling her own story and then it being read by someone else it's kind of giving her a bit of agency back and autonomy um and again it sounds like it has that kind of gothic melodramatic you know like an old manor house in the woods where she's been kept um a secret or you know like prisoner but then also i'm assuming like some pretty hard-hitting stuff about women in those days about class in france and yeah i think it sounds really interesting i'm hoping it's not too i mean it's obviously gonna be really dark but I guess it'll be interesting to see where that balance is between like the storytelling and the not fun but you know the kind of drama of it or if it'll just be like a super depressing thing about like oh you're a poor woman born in france you're a woman born anytime unlucky but yeah it's got so much good reviews and buzz around it i'm, I'm hopeful that it'll be really good then we have on the 28th of october in every mirror she's black by lola akinmade akerstrom uh, this sounds amazing. Uh, it's set in Sweden. Is it Sweden? Yes. Yeah. So it's about three black women who live in Stockholm and are all kind of connected by one 
um, influential white man. So initially, just love a multiple female perspective where they're all kind of like linked by something. Um, and it says it's like a really timely book. It's obviously like a lot about race. I think it's really interesting to explore um, the experience of black women in in Sweden, in Stockholm. It's not something I've read before. I feel like I've read stuff in the US, of course, and stuff in the UK, but interesting um, to look at that experience of, of racism, potentially of, you know, misogynoir in a Scandinavian country, because I don't know, Scandinavia is interesting in that it is on the one hand um, seen as a very kind of aspirational place because they have, you know, a very high quality of life. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to explore that in um, Scandinavia. And so it says there's a successful marketing executive who has moved from the US. Yes, yeah, she's kind of looking for love. Then there is a flight attendant who meets this man who's really influential. And then there's a refugee um, who's lost her entire family and finds a job cleaning the toilets at this man's office. And yeah, we're gonna explore all of these women's experiences with this man and, and living in this place. Um, and I just think it sounds really, really interesting. It's been described as like really nuanced, um, obviously very like timely, which you know, it's a word that gets thrown around a lot, but it, it really is. Um, and yeah, I love a multiple perspective female narrative. I'm really interested, as I've mentioned, in looking at like the experience of racism and social issues in Scandinavia for black women. And yeah, this sounds great. It's giving me like the new Such a Fun Age vibes, which is a book that I loved. And yes, very excited about it. Another one that is a little bit more well-known and is coming in, coming on the 11th of November is The Fell by Sarah Moss. I am a big Sarah Moss fan. I have read Summer Water, which came out last year, and Ghost Wall, and I really, really like them both. Again, I haven't got to her backlist yet, which like I really should do. I'm just trying to stop myself buying books. Um, <laughs> you can request them if they're new and then they're free. That's how I justify it to myself. But this does sound really, really amazing. And I actually think it's a book that is engaging with the pandemic, which is something I feel a bit, uh, conflicted about i was about to do such a name drop there and be like i was speaking to pat barker the other day book a winning author pat barker but i mean i was um we were filming an event for the festival durham book festival program live now go check it out it's great and she was saying um that she thinks that coronavirus might be a bit of like the world war where people didn't write prose about the second world about the first world war until like there was time after it and i think that's really interesting like there are a couple of books already that are being written about the pandemic obviously this potentially um burn coat by sarah hall which is another book that i'm massively anticipating that's coming out in october i think that's set during lockdown kind of um or like inspired by lockdown but i do think it'll be really interesting to see if contemporary writers want to engage with this topic or if they feel like they want the space or if people consuming it needs some space and i guess the difference with like the war is you know it there's no definitive like over date for corona and the pandemic like it is continuing so anyway that was an aside but this book does engage with it um says she's doing cor for coronavirus what summer water did for brexit so high praise um says a dusk on a november evening in 2020 a woman slips out of her garden gate and turns up the hill um, she's in the middle of a two-week quarantine period, but she can't take it anymore. So she goes like out for a little walk. She's like, the moor, no one will be on the moor. It'll be fine. No one will know. But then her neighbour, Alice, sees her leaving. Um, and they realise, Kate's son then realises that uh, she's missing. Because, you know, she only wanted a little walk, but she's actually fallen and badly injured herself. Um, and then there has to be like a big mountain rescue operation to get her back. And it says it's unbearably suspenseful, witty and wise. It asks probing questions about the place the world has become since March 2020. And I think that is a really interesting way of exploring the pandemic because it's fairly light touch. Uh, well, not light touch, but it's in it's talking about it in a very um, specific individualistic way. And then it can look out from there. It's not trying to write like the pandemic novel or like the political novel. It's, you know, one person thinking I'm just going to go for a walk and then that having um like massive effects on it and i imagine as with summer water it's going to be a lot of like the different ways people respond to that decision you know some people would say well okay it's just a walk she wasn't hurting anyone she didn't think she was going to fall over i imagine others would be like that's completely selfish we're all staying in why can't you and yeah it might be it might be a little bit too soon but i do think that um it'll be really interesting and it does sound very like suspenseful snappy as sarah moss always is then Finally, on the 11th of November is Things We Do Not Tell the People We Love, and that is by Huma Qureshi. And this is a short story collection. Who is she? Obsessed with short stories now, really into them. Uh, and this sounds amazing. Like, 
definitely, like I say, so much more into short stories now. And this is the one that I've heard a lot of buzz about. I think sounds really amazing. Um, it says it's a collection about mothers and daughters, children lost, unborn, grown up, grown apart, and the distance between lovers. It looks a lot at like families um, and the parts of ourselves we never really reveal is what it says. And I do love a short story collection that looks at interpersonal relationships. It's probably my favorite kind of short story. I do think this sounds maybe kind of sad or like, I don't know, a little bit like sorrowful, but then it could potentially be quite beautiful. Um, these are all themes that I really like to engage with. This is also looks at like displacement and belonging. Um, and also this collection includes a short story called The Jam Maker, which won the Harper's Bazaar short story prize of 2020. So I feel like these are going to be some new, exciting short stories and I'm excited about them. Okay, well, they are all the books that I wanted to talk about. Please do let me know what books you are most anticipating for the rest of the year, or if you think any of these sound interesting. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, I would love if you subscribe to my Instagram. My storygraph will be linked down below, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!